So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to find the center of this cylinder, even though I don't have the rest of the cylinder. And then I'm going to use that to duplicate one side and flip it on the other side. So I'm going to select six edges. So I'm going to hit Q, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So theoretically, this is half of our cylinder. I'm going to go to extrude. I'm going to hit R for scale. I know my edges are extruded. And notice that I'm going to bring them right here to the middle. It's not the center, as you guys can see. So I'm going to do right mouse button vertexes. So I'm going to select these vertices right here. And I'm going to go shift, right mouse button, merge vertices to the center. Again, this is not a true center. To find the true center, what you have to do, and I'm going to go from the bottom, you have to delete all these edges, like so. Select the edges, shift, right mouse button, delete edges, and there you have it. Now we have exactly half of our cylinder. If I want to find the center of this edge, one really cool trick that we can do is use the multi-cut tool. If I select the multi-cut tool, I go to my edge and I hold shift, notice that it's going to give me the center of my edge. As soon as I find that center, I'm going to click once and I'm going to get out of my multi-cut tool. So I'm going to hit Q for the selection tool, right mouse button, look at that. We have a vertex, a vertex right in the middle of our edge. Now with this point here, what I can do is I can create, go to create, locator, and I've created a locator. There it is. I'm going to select W for move, do a general movement of my locator, B for snap to point, and I'm going to middle drag on that curve and observe that now this locator is in the center of this cylinder. So how do we recreate the missing edges right here. All right, I'm going to move this so we can see what we're going to do next. Now, what I want to do now is I want to select this face. So I'm going to go right mouse button, select this face right here. Make sure that I don't select anything else. And I'm going to extract this face. I'm not going to duplicate it. I'm going to extract it. So I'm going to go to edit mesh, extract. So now this is one piece right here. And this is another piece. Notice that if I hit W, my pivot point goes to the X, Y, Z, zero. I want to put my pivot point where the locator is. So I'm going to go to D to disengage the pivot point. I'm going to hold V for point, and I'm going to middle drag. I'm not clicking on these edges. I'm going to middle drag on my locator, and then I'm going to re-engage the pivot point. And now look at this. I can rotate this guy right here. And if I rotate it to the opposite side, guess what it's going to tell me in my channel box? It's going to go either negative 180 or 180. So if I type in 180, it does the same thing. It flips this face from where it was to the opposite side by using a rotation. So now what I can do is the following. Let me delete my history, freeze my transformation. I don't care about the center pivot. I can put it in the center. I really don't care because this is going to be a sacrificial face. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this edge right here, shift select the two edges, and I'm going to go to my modeling toolkit. I'm going to extrude. I'm going to hit W because I don't like using the gizmo from the extrude tool. Let me bring my wireframe on shaded, and I'm going to move it ever so slightly. V, middle mouse, snap it to this point right here. All right, it's going berserk because there's all the points in the background. So rotate your object so there's nothing behind this selection right here. There you have it. And I'm going to do another extrusion. Hit G, W for move tool. And now I'm going to snap it to this guy right here. Q, let me select this face. Right, I can hide my locator. Now I can combine these two pieces. Select these two pieces, Modeling Toolkit, Combine. However, we know that we have these border edges. Let me increase the edge width so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's time to weld these guys. Right mouse button, Vertex, select these two guys right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go Shift, Right mouse button, Merge Vertices to Center, 
All right, we don't have to do it again. So for the next two vertices, I'm gonna hit G, which is repeat the last operation. Go to these guys right here. Make sure that you don't select anything in the back. Hit G. And I'm gonna do the same thing for these guys here. G, G, and these guys are here, G. So I was able to replicate half of my cylinder to the opposite side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my edges. So I'm going to double click so I can select the edge loop. I'm going to extrude. So in my modeling toolkit, I'm going to click on extrude. Again, not a big fan of the gizmo, so I'm going to hit R for scale. And I'm going to bring them in like so. I'm going to hit G to create another extrusion. W for the move tool. I'm going to go down. And now it's time to cap that hole right here. I'm going to hit G, R for scale, and I'm going to move it as close as I can. Go to the bottom view, like so. Right mouse button, vertex, select all these guys right here. Shift, right mouse button, and I'm going to go merge vertices to center. Now, a lot of people, what they do is that they start getting rid of every other edge so you can get quads. Obviously right here we do not have quads. Before that though, what I want to do, I want to hit three so I can see my smooth version. And what I want to do is the following. Let me delete my history, freeze my transformation, center the pivot. I'm going to go back to one and I'm going to bevel. So I'm going to go Q, select these guys right here, shift select these guys right here, and I'm going to apply the same bevel to the inner edge. What I would do at this moment, I would look at my reference sheet and I would study the size of the bevel. So here's our reference sheet. We're gonna go right here, so let me zoom in. And I'm gonna look at the bevel for these bolt covers right here. And notice that they're quite round, as you can see. So I'm gonna take this bevel in consideration. I'm gonna go back to Maya. And I'm gonna apply my bevel and obviously it's a huge fraction, so let me reduce the fraction ever so slightly right here. Now, if I was to go to object mode and hit three, notice that we get a really good bevel. So is it as round as our reference? Let's check it out. Probably not, I can go a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna select the object, go back to my history, which can be found inside of the channel box, poly bevel, and I'm gonna increase my fraction like so, right there. So now it looks more like a reference. And one thing that I've noticed, if I go to one, is that when I hit three, this edge right here becomes too smooth. So I need to add a support edge right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to my side view so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna hit F so we can find this piece. Let me get out of X-ray mode. And I wanna put a support edge right here. So I'm gonna select edges, shift, right mouse button, and I'm gonna go to insert edge loop tool. Let me reset the tool, close it, and here's our support edge. So now, when I go to object mode, and let me get out of wireframe unshaded, and I hit three, notice that this edge right here does not collapse as much, okay? If it's still collapsing, really easy fix, Select this edge loop with the move tool, move it closer right here. Object mode, one, three, one, three, perfect. So this is how we were able to create the rest of our bolt cover for the top of the housing. And what we're gonna do next is we are going to combine these two pieces right here, the housing cover that we created using a cube and beveling all the edges along with this little piece right here.